We wanted to see what CEDH would look like if Flash was legal. We built two decks with Flash and faced them off against two of the format's most prolific decks. So we tested out Flash and the results were very interesting. First, we have Playing With Power member Alana, piloting the partner pair of Rograx, Son of Rogra, and Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. This is your classic Grixis Turbo list. It seeks to resolve an advantage engine like Gristic Study or Ad Nauseum. It then attempts to win through Oracle or Breach Lines. Next, we have Playing With Power member Alex, piloting Kenrith, the Return King. This is a five color Flash Hulk deck. It seeks to cast Flash, resolve and kill Protein Hulk, and assemble the Cephalid Breakfast combo to win at instant speed. After that, we have Zane from Eminence Gaming, also piloting the partner pair of Rograx Son of Roga and Silas Ren Seeker Adept. Much the same as Alana's list, this deck seeks to resolve a card advantage engine as soon as possible. It then wins with a classic Grixis Oracle or Breach Lines. Finally, we have Mikey from Eminence Gaming, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Thrasios Triton Hero. This is a Flash Hulk deck that seeks to grind advantage with its commanders. It then tries to win over top of its opponents with Flash at instant speed. Without further ado, let's kick off this imminent emergency emotional embrace. Alana won the Flip the Switch challenge and gets to start us off. Alana draws a card for turn and plays a Blood Crypt into play tapped. She casts a Mana Crypt. She casts a Talisman of Dominance. She casts her commander, Rograx, son of Rogar. She passes. Alex draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to cast Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and randomly discards a Grim Monolith. Alex passes. Zane draws and plays a Marsh Flats. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts his commander, Rograx, son of Rogar. He casts a Talisman of Indulgence. He taps his Talisman to help cast a Wish Claw Talisman. Zane ends his turn. Mikey draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Soul Ring. Mikey passes the turn. During her upkeep, Alana wins her Mana Crypt roll. She draws and casts the One Ring. It enters and Alana gains protection from everything. She activates the One Ring, adding a Burn Encounter and drawing a card. Alana ships the turn. Alex draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to help cast a Rhystic Study. In response, Mikey cracks the Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts a Tainted Pact. It resolves and he exiles from the top of his library, including Flash, until he reveals a Mystic Remora, putting it into his hand. Then Rhystic resolves and Alex ends his turn. During his draw step, Zane takes a damage through his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he plays an Arid Mesa. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. Zane passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mikey loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He casts a Mystic Remora, paying for Rhystic. Mikey passes to Alana. During her upkeep, Alana loses the life to the One Ring. She also loses her Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. She draws and activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing two cards. She taps her Talisman to help cast a Rhystic Study of her own. Rhystic and Mystic trigger and Mikey and Alex draw. Alana passes, discarding to hand size. Alex draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. Alex gives the turn to Zane. During his draw step, Zane takes a damage through his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he plays a Command Tower. Zane passes. During his upkeep, Mikey pays to keep his Remora. He also wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He casts a Noble Hierarch. Two Rhystics trigger, and in response, Zane flashes in an Orcish Bowmasters. Two Rhystics trigger, and Alex and Alana draw. Bowmasters enters, Zane kills Alana's Rograk, and Zane amasses Orcs 1. With two Rhystics still in the stack, Alex taps his Ancient Tomb to help flash in his own Orcish Bowmasters. Rhystic triggers and Alex pays. Bowmasters enters, kills Zane's Bowmasters, and Alex amasses one. Then Alex and Alana draw, Bowmasters triggers, and targets Zane's Rograk. In response, Zane casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting the trigger. Remora and two Rhystics trigger, all three draws, Bowmasters triggers twice, kills Rograk, and pings Alana, then Alex amasses two. Then SWAT resolves, redirecting the trigger to Bowmasters itself. Then Alex's Bowmaster dies, Alex amasses one, then finally, Noble Hierarch resolves. Mikey passes. During her upkeep, Alana loses two life to the One Ring. She also wins her Mana Crypt roll. She draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. She activates the One Ring, adding a counter and drawing three cards. She recasts her commander, Rograk. Rhystic triggers and Alex draws. She taps Ancient Tomb to help cast a Mana Vault. Rhystic and Mystic trigger, Mikey draws and Alana pays for Rhystic. Alana passes, discarding to hand size. Alex draws and plays a Forbidden Orchard. He taps his Ancient Tomb and Mana Confluence to help cast an Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing his Orc army as an additional cost. Mystic and Rhystic trigger, and Alana and Mikey draw. Then in response, Alana casts Fierce Guardian's ship for its alternate cost, targeting Evolution. Mystic and Rhystic trigger, and Mikey and Alex draw again. Evolution is countered, and Alex taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Mikey a spirit to help cast Dockside Extortionist. Rhystic triggers, and Alana draws a card. In response, Mikey casts Pact of Negation, paying for both Rhystics. Dockside is countered, and Alex passes, discarding to hand size. During his draw step, Zane takes a damage through his Mana Vault. In his main phase, he casts Thassa's Oracle. Both Rhystics trigger and Alex and Alana draw. Oracle enters and with the trigger on the stack, Zane casts Demonic Consultation. Mystic and two Rhystics trigger and all three players draw cards. 
In response, Mikey casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Consultation. Both Rhystic's trigger and Alex and Alana draw. Then Flusterstorm counters Consultation. Then Oracle's trigger resolves and Zane looks at the top two, putting one on top and the other on bottom. Zane ships the turn to Mikey. At the end of Zane's turn, Alana taps her talisman to help cast Born Upon a Wind. Rhystic and Mystic trigger and Mikey and Alex draw. Born resolves and Alana draws a card. She casts Jessica's Will, choosing both modes, targeting Alex, and Mikey and Alex draw through Rhystic and Mystic. Then Alana adds 12 red and exiles Wish Claw Talisman, Demonic Consultation, and Swan Song. She casts Mox Diamond and Mikey and Alex draw. Diamond resolves and Alana discards a Bloodstained Mire. She casts Dark Ritual and both draw again. Then Alana adds 3 black. She casts Ad Nauseam, Mystic and Rhystic trigger, and Mikey and Alex draw. Ad Nauz resolves and Alana reveals a Vampire Tutor, Gemstone Caverns, Soul Ring, Time Twister, Calling the Weak, Defense Grid, Grim Monolith, Bergy God of Storytelling, Underground Sea, Flooded Strand, and a Force of Will, deciding to stop there. She casts Calling the Weak, sacrificing Rograk as an additional cost. Mystic and Mystic Trigger and Alex and Mikey draw. Then Alana adds 4 black. She casts Demonic Tutor and both players draw again. She fetches up a card into her hand. She casts Underworld Breach and both players draw. In response, Mikey casts Mindbreak Chat for its alternate cost. Both Rhystic's Trigger and Alex and Alana draw. In response, Alana casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Mindbreak Trap, paying for Rhystic. Remora triggers and Mikey draws a card. Trap is countered and Breach resolves. Alana escapes Red Elemental Blast, targeting Alex Rhystic's Study, paying for Rhystic's Study. Remora triggers and Mikey draws. Then Rhystic is destroyed. She escapes Red Blast again, targeting Remora. Remora triggers and Mikey draws a card. Then Remora is destroyed. She escapes Demonic Tutor, fetching up a card into her hand. She casts Lion's Eye Diamond. The table sees that they have no outs, concede, and Alana wins the game. Do you have extra cards lying around that you don't use? Want to buy or trade for some extra cards but don't know how to maximize the value? Then you should try out today's sponsor, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. I have used Card Conduit multiple times already. I always use them to get the best value for my extra cards. I get fair prices for my cards and they save me tons of time. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them your unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best price for your cards. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value. They will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They give you the best price for your cards. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list even with Card Conduit's fees. Card Conduit also optimizes buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of the card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off of their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Alex draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Steam Vents. He casts a Wheel of Fortune. Everyone discards their hands and draws seven cards. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He casts Imperial Seal. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Alex ends his turn. Zane draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts his Commander, Rograk. He taps Ancient Tomb to cast a Talisman of Indulgence. He casts Mana Vault. Zane passes. Mikey draws, plays a Marsh Flats, and passes the turn. Alana draws and plays a Polluted Delta. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Alana passes the turn. During his upkeep, Alex wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to help cast his commander, Kenrith, the Return King. Alex ends his turn. Zane draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He taps Ancient Tomb to help cast a Time Twister. Then each player shuffles their hands and graveyards into their libraries and draws seven. Zane passes. At the end of Zane's turn, Mikey cracks his Marsh Flats, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave onto the battlefield tapped. Mikey draws and plays a Savannah. He casts Esper Sentinel. He passes. Alana draws and plays a Polluted Delta. Again. <laughs> she cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. She casts a Talisman of Indulgence. Esper triggers and Mikey draws. She casts her commander, Rograk. She casts Paradise Mantle. She equips Mantle to Rograk and passes the turn. 
During his upkeep, Alex wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts Ranger Captain of Eos. It enters, and Alex fetches up an Esper Sentinel into his hand. He moves to combat and attacks Zane with Kenrith. Zane takes it, and Alex passes. Zane draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He taps his Talisman and his Ancient Tomb to help cast his commander, Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. He cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Mystic Remora, paying for Esper. Zane ships the turn. Mikey draws, plays a Wooded Foothills, and passes. During Alana's upkeep, Alex activates Ranger Captain, sacrificing it. Everyone wonders if Alex is trying to win right now, and he assures them he has no green cards in his hand. Then Ranger Captain's ability resolves, locking out opponents from non-creature spells this turn. Alana draws and casts her commander, Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. Alana passes. At the end of Alana's turn, Alex flashes in an Orcish Bowmasters. It enters, kills Zane's Rograk, and Alex amasses one. The turn moves to Alex. During his upkeep, Alex loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Tundra. He taps his Ancient Tomb to activate Kenrith's last ability, reanimating Ranger Captain to the battlefield. It enters and, in response, Mikey cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He flashes in an Opposition Agent. Agent resolves, then Alex ignores his Ranger Captain trigger. He casts Esper Sentinel. Alex ends his turn. During his upkeep, Zane pays to keep his Remora. He draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He passes to Mikey. Mikey draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. Mikey ends his turn. At the end of Mikey's turn, Alana casts Deadly Relic for its alternate cost, targeting Kenrith. Esper, Mystic, and Esper Trigger, and all three players draw. Bowmaster triggers twice, Alex kills Alana's Rograk, and pings Alana, then Alex amasses two. Still in the end step, Alex casts Final Fortune. Mystic and Esper Trigger, and Mikey and Zane draw. Bowmasters triggers twice, killing Opposition Agent, and Alex amasses two. In response, Mikey casts Force of Negation for its alternate cost, exiling a blue card targeting Final Fortune. Remora triggers, and Zane draws. Bowmasters triggers, pings Alana, and Alex amasses one. The turn moves to Alana. Alana draws and casts Conqueror's Flail. Esper, Remora, and Esper all trigger, and all three players draw. Bowmasters triggers twice, killing Alana Silas, and Alex amasses two. Alana ships the turn. At the end of Alana's turn, Zane cracks his Wooded Foothills, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts Snap, targeting Alex's Ranger Captain. Both Esper's trigger and Alex and Mikey draw. Bowmaster's triggers, kills Mikey's Esper, and Alex amasses one. In response, Alex sacrifices Ranger Captain. Snap fizzles, and the turn moves to Alex. During his upkeep, Alex loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He moves to combat and attacks Mikey with his Orc Army. Mikey takes eight, and in his second main phase, Alex casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing his Orc Army as an additional cost. Remora triggers, Zane draws, and in response, he taps Ancient Tomb to help cast the Tainted Pact, paying for Esper. In response, Alex casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Mr. Kimura. Remora triggers, Zane draws, Bowmasters triggers, deals one to Silas, and Alex amasses one. In response, Zane casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Chain of Vapor. In response, Alex casts Delay, targeting Swat. Remora triggers, Zane draws, Alex kills Silas, and Alex amasses one. In response, Zane casts Force of Negation for its alternate cost, exiling a blue card, targeting Diabolic Intent. In response, Alex casts Mind Break Trap for its alternate cost, targeting all of Zane's spells. For more triggers, Zane draws, Alex pings Zane, and then Alex amasses. In response, Mikey casts a Mind Break Trap of his own, targeting all spells on the stack. Esper and Remora trigger, and Alex and Zane draw. Bowmasters triggers, ping Zane, and Alex amasses. With nothing else, Mind Break Trap exiles all spells. Next, Alex taps Mana Confluence to help cast Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. All through, Alex passes to Zane. During his upkeep, Zane taps his Ancient Tomb to pay for his Remora. He draws and casts Defense Grid. In response, Mikey cracks his Verdant Catacombs, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrumbland onto the battlefield. He casts a Silence. Remora triggers, Zane draws, Bowmasters triggers, ping Zane, and Alex amasses. In response, Zane casts Dark Ritual. In response, Alana pays two life to cast Mental Misstep. Esper and Remora trigger, and Zane and Alex draw. Bowmasters triggers, ping Zane, and Alex amasses. Dark Ritual is countered, Silence resolves, then Defense Grid resolves. Zane plays a Gemstone Caverns as his land for turn, and then passes, discarding to hand size. Mikey draws and plays a City of Traders. He takes no other actions and passes the turn. Alana draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Watery Grave onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. She recasts her commander, Rograk. She equips Conqueror's Flail to Rograk and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Alex wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Blood Crypt into play untapped, paying two life. He moves to combat and attacks Zane with his Orc Army. Zane takes six, and in his second main phase, Alex recasts his commander, Kenrith. Alex ships the turn. During his upkeep, Zane lets his Remora die. During his draw step, he takes a damage through his Mana Vault. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. Esper triggers, and Alex draws. Zane casts Mox Opal. He casts Chain of Vapor, targeting his Mana Vault. Vault bounces, Zane sacks the land, copies the chain, bouncing Mox Opal, and then stops the chain there. He recasts Mana Vault. He recasts Mox Opal. He casts Grinding Station. It enters, triggers, and in response, he activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Mana Vault, milling three. Then Grinding Station untaps. He casts Yogg Moth's Will. In response, Mikey channels Beseju, who endures, targeting Defense Grid. 
Grid is destroyed and Zane fetches up a Blood Crypt onto the battlefield tapped. In response, Alana casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Yawgmoth's Will. Will is countered and Zane casts Last Chance, getting an extra turn. Zane passes the turn to himself. Zane draws and casts Praetor's Grasp, targeting Alana. He holds priority and cracks his LED, discards his hand and adds 3 red. Esper triggers and Alex draws. Grasp resolves and he goes to fetch up Alana's Underworld Breach, but Alana lets him know that it's actually in her hand. So he fetches up another card into Exile face down. He casts Yawgmoth's Will from Exile. In response, Mikey activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Deathrite Shaman into his hand. Still in response, Alex casts Silence. Silence resolves, locking out opponents from spells this turn. Then Yawgmoth's Will resolves. Zane has nothing else to do, moves to his end step, and loses the game. Mikey draws and activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Dispel into his hand. Bowmasters triggers, pings Rograk, and Alex amasses one. He plays an Underground C. City of Traders triggers and Mikey sacrifices it. He casts Deathrite Shaman and passes the turn. At the end of Mikey's turn, Alex casts Enlightened Tutor, fetching up an Underworld Breach onto the top of his library. Alana draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. She recasts her commander, Silas Wren. Alana passes. At the end of Alana's turn, Alex cracks his LED, discards his hand, and adds 3 black. He activates Kenrith's last ability, returning Ranger Captain Abios to the battlefield. It enters, and Alex declines to search. The turn moves to Alex. During his upkeep, Alex wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Mikey with Kenrith and his Orc army. Mikey blocks with Deathrite Shaman. In response, Alex activates Kenrith's first ability, giving all creatures trample in haste. Shaman dies and Mikey takes 10 damage. In a second main phase, Alex sacrifices Ranger Captain of Eos, locking out opponents from non-creature spells this turn. Alex casts Underworld Breach. He escapes Enlightened Tutor, fetching up a Wishclaw Talisman onto the top of his library. He taps his Ancient Tomb and his Mana Confluence to activate Kenrith's ability, drawing a card. He casts Wishclaw Talisman. He escapes LED. He cracks it for 3 blue. He activates Wishclaw Talisman, fetching up a card into his hand and giving Wishclaw to Mikey. He casts Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. He mills 15 cards. He presents a loop of escaping Lion's Eye Diamond and escaping Brain Freeze, milling his entire library. He escapes Thassa's Oracle. Oracle enters, and Alex wins the game. So what did we learn? We learned that the process to assemble Flash Hulk is a lot more clunky than we originally remembered. Decks are much better equipped to deal with what Flash is trying to do nowadays. Today's CEDH strategies are more refined and more resilient than ever. Win conditions are more compact and need fewer dead cards unlike what the Flash Hulk package requires. In fact, in this game, Flash was such a low strategy that Alex didn't even choose to win with it. His first attempt was thwarted and he didn't even bother with a second attempt. The most interesting part of tonight was when Alana decided to build her own Flash package with Born Upon a Wind. She did what Flash Hulk decks were trying to do and did it with far more resources. Of course, we cannot say that Flash should be unbanned after only playing two games. However, we believe that after tonight, we should start having conversations about Flash again. The most valuable card in tonight's games, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Born Upon a Win. I don't believe anything rubbed it in Flash's face tonight quite like this card. It did what Flash was trying to do, did it better, and was actually able to close out the game. In the right decks, this card creates many more opportunities to go for your win. Thank you so much for watching, and check out this video to see how many spells can be countered by counterbalance in a single game.